Hi, my name is Sharon Clampett. I'm a professor at Inter-American University of Puerto Rico in Ponce, which is on the southern coast. I've been teaching online for over 20 years, and I know some of you have been kind of thrown into the world of e-learning um, with this, this COVID-19 crisis. So I decided to take some of this shutdown or lockdown time that I have uh, because our university is also closed right now um, to, to record a few videos and see if I can help you folks out uh, using vi video conferencing as a, a way to continue to communicate and give class with your students. It's a very easy tool to use. So the first video I did was just the basics of, of using Blackboard Collaborate. So if you haven't seen that yet, you might want to go check that out before you start this one. In this video, I'm going to show you how to share content with your students. And by content, I mean that PowerPoint presentation that you might want to use for uh, the class, some document you might want to discuss with them, or even YouTube videos or other types of videos. So let's get started. I'm already in the course uh, and I've already gone into the room. So uh, I'm just going to go down to the menu that's in the lower right hand corner, the collaborate panel. And you can see that it has those four icons that I discussed in the first video, the chat room, the list of identities, and this little box with the, with the arrow is for sharing content. And you can see on the menu that we have sharing a blank whiteboard, sharing an application screen, and sharing files. Those are the three things I'm going to discuss in this video. In another video, I'll, I'll uh, talk a little bit about the polling, which is kind of fun, and the breakout groups. So the first thing, we, the easiest that we can do is sharing a whiteboard. And that is exactly what it is. You click on that and it brings up a whiteboard for you. Now I have a, an old bamboo tablet that I use and I have a little stylus. Uh, if you don't have a stylus, you'll have to use the mouse and it can be a little tricky, but I'm sure you have uh, better technology than I do. You can see at the top of the screen that it has the cursor for you to select the different objects that you're going to create on the whiteboard, a pointer, so you can point at different objects, a little hand with a finger, a pencil for you to draw or write on the board. I'm having a, a hard time right now. <laughs> okay. And um, a shape, you can draw either a, a rectangular, a, a circle-ish, or ellipse, or a line. Maybe I should have started with the circle <laughs> and then gone back to the, uh, the little pencil. You can write text and, uh, and you can make that, I think, larger by uh, just kind of stretching it, but I can't remember right now. I can't remember that right now. You, anyways, you can write text. Okay. And then you have the eraser, which if you click on it, it erases everything. But I do believe that if you draw a couple circles or squares, then you can select which one you want to erase and it won't erase the whole thing. Oh, no, it erases everything. Sorry about that. So make sure you, you want what you want there. If you erase it, it will be gone. Uh, when you select either the pencil or the square or the, the, the shapes or the text box, you can then also select a color if you want to change uh, to a different color. And there's the text is in red now. So that's, that's what a whiteboard is, and you just use it like a whiteboard. It can be a little tricky when you're using a mouse instead of a stylus. I do use it for um, when I'm doing uh, phonetic transcription with my uh, phonetics to my linguistic students because it's harder to do with a, tick, uh, a keyboard. When you're done, you go up to the upper right-hand corner and you click on the little circle with the square in the middle of it. That stops sharing. 
So, and now I go back to my, uh, my screen. Now, if I want, I'm going to skip the share application screen for a moment, and I'm going down to share files, which is probably the next thing that you'll use most. And if you go to share files, uh, you can see I've already brought up some files. Uh, let me just go ahead and erase this one. And you can bring up image files, PDF files, or PowerPoint. And when you bring up a PowerPoint, it will convert it into images. And I'm going to show you, um, you do have to make sure that your PowerPoint presentation doesn't have any like trans transitions that uh, one covers up the other or the, the, um, the effect is for one shape to disappear and then the other shape to come on top of it or text because it does not uh, translate those transitions. It converts everything into an image and you'll just have a big blob of squares on top of it. And I'll show you in this uh, presentation that I'm going to bring up. As you can see, you can just click on this and then go look in your file directory and bring up the file that way. But you can also just find the file like I'm going to do here. I have this presentation and just drop and drag, drag and drop <laughs> uh, on to that little square and it brings up and you can see that it's converting it now. It takes a little while, especially if the, there's a little bit of lag in the internet connection. And there's a lot more people using Collaborate lately. <laughs> They've had to ramp up their, uh, their bandwidth to take care of this excess load, the unexpected excess load. So, okay, there it is. It's up there. What, if it's in black, like it is here, that means now I can share it. And I just click on the share button right here. It gives me a preview of the slide so I can decide if I want to start at the very beginning or if I want to start uh, later on. Um, I'm going to start at the beginning. And there it is, the first slide. And you can see down here at the bottom is where you move from slide to slide. There's one of 19 slides. Don't worry, I'm not going to give you the whole lesson here. But I just want to show you that you move from slide to slide. Okay. You do not see any effects. You won't see any transitions. So what happens, I'm going to move down here now to this little slide that I had. And the way this slide works when I'm using PowerPoint in a regular transition, bring it up here, is that I present first this student uh, communication the professor answers, and then I ask them three questions about whether the it was timely, um, relevant, and actionable. And these little boxes that I have here um, come in one at a time. One disappears from another. And you can see here that it does not work when it transfers to um, an image. So you may have to modify uh, some of your, trans your slides or just be aware that not everything will translate uh, correctly in when you share the file this way in Collaborate. Okay, if you wanna stop, and this a friend of mine just asked me, uh, a colleague of mine asked me, what do you do when you wanna present something and then you wanna go back to the whiteboard? Well, it's not that easy. It's, I wish I could tell you just alternate tab back and forth, but it doesn't work that way. So you have to stop sharing the, the slide in this case, stop sharing the, the, that file. Go back to, where, to the share files menu, and then go back to the, black, to the whiteboard. There's no other way to do it. You have to kind of go back and forth. Okay, so now you can also share documents. Um, like I have been sharing this document with my doctoral students. So they're working on uh, technology and, and language instruction. So. You can bring up a PDF file, and I'm going to share it. And again, it gives you a preview, so you can decide where you want to, uh, what slide you want to start with, or what slide you want to show. So I'm going to choose this one, which has these two models that we were discussing. And you can see it's a little small. You're probably having some problems seeing it right now. Well, upper in this upper left-hand corner, there's a little icon that's a page with a magnifying glass. And if you click on that, it will allow you to make this image larger. Okay, now there is a 
little problem here. That makes it large for me, but it does not make it large for my students. You have to tell your students if they want to see it larger, they have to go up to that icon and magnify it. Uh, that's uh, one of the little inconveniences of using a simpler um, interface for this. You can also um, just create an image of the thing that you want to see, you know, screen capture it or whatever, and then just bring up that image and it will be larger on the screen. But even so, you may want to look at a larger part of the model. Let's see, it can get pretty big. But they have to do that as well. So you'll have to give them instructions. Okay. So that was basically sharing the uh, files, PDF files or a PowerPoint presentation and sharing the whiteboard. Now there's one other option which is sharing the application screen. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this uh, in while I'm recording at the same time. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Sharing an application will allow you to share your entire screen, a specific application, or a Chrome tab. Now, this is something new that I have been using, and it works. I've, I've used it, and it works. I don't, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it here um, while I'm recording this, but it's sharing a YouTube video. And I've also shared uh, videos from our uh, Films on Demand collection. So let's try this. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you have the video that you want. I'm going to cancel that for now. Make sure the video that you want is up in a tab from uh, in, in Chrome in this case. Okay, so I'm bringing up a video. So um, I've got a video of a little that I made a, a while back of a little kitty that I rescued. So I won't have any trouble with the uh, copyright issues. And now I'm going to go back to Blackboard, back, back to Cloud, and I'm going to share an application screen. I'm going to choose Chrome tab, and you can see here that I have this YouTube video and I'm going to select it but I also have to check the share audio button here or they won't be able to hear the audio of the video so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click on the share uh, YouTube video here and it's, it's brought me back to YouTube but you can also see it is soon coming up that there it is now, when you share your application, you're going to have to switch over to the tab in Chrome or in your browser where that application is running or sh ship to the whatever application you're using. And you're going to control it from the application. I can't press the play button here and make it run. I have to go to YouTube and make it run. I put, I've taken off my head to see that you do hear the audio, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. Yeah. Now if I go back to... So you can see that they are hearing that video and they're also uh, seeing it at the same time. Now if I want to stop it, I have to go back to YouTube. Okay, and stop it. Okay. So I thought that was pretty cool, and so did my students. So I was able to share um, some videos on YouTube, and I've also tried it with the um, Films on Demand. Oops, not there. Let's see if I have it. I can't see it. Here it is. Okay. So we have, our library has uh, in its databases the Films on Demand collection, and, um, and I found that I can also share uh, that video 
in uh, Collaborate. So if I go here to share an application screen, I share a Chromecast, and I'm going to look for Errors of Music History Baroque on my Films in Demand. I have to click Share Audio, Share, and then I go to this is the actual tab where the errors of music is, and that's where I would play so that it can be seen in. Uh, there's a little bit of lag to this one, so I'm going to uh, stop it here. Oops. There is music. These errors of classical music. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing that. Now, there's one other thing that you can do. I haven't had too much success with it because of the lag uh, in the video conferencing. But if you really need those animations in your PowerPoint presentations, instead of uploading the presentation to your, uh, to collaborate, you can share your application screen. You can share that PowerPoint show. It has to be the show. And then as you uh, control the show from within, so basically you're not going to be seeing Collaborate while you're running this show. You're going to be in PowerPoint and you're talking and you're discussing, but you won't be seeing uh, if your students write anything in the chat box or if they raise their hand. Uh, or if they're telling you that they can't hear it, you won't see it because you cannot control the PowerPoint presentation through share application within Collaborate. You have to go out of Collaborate and um, switch to the tab where the presentation is uh, in your computer and run it from there. Okay? One of the options that you could try, and I had thought about this as I was playing around with today, is to uh, put a timed animations in your PowerPoint presentation so you don't have to manually click put a, so that it'll move on to the next uh, animation. If you do it timed, you can start it running and then come back to collaborate and continue your conference while the slides are changing automatically with the timing that you put in. It's a little more complicated. I wouldn't recommend it. If you're just starting with this, the easiest thing to do is just go ahead and upload your PowerPoint uh, in the share files and work from there. That's the easiest thing. It's what I do most of the time anyways. So I hope that this is useful. I hope you find it uh, useful for your new classes that you're uh, showing. It really isn't that hard. Uh, just remember share files and remember that to stop sharing files you have to click on the little zero with a square in the middle, okay, a little circle with a square in the middle. So go here, a little bit slow today. There it is. Okay. Because I increased the magnification for the document, it keeps it there. So I have to go down to be able to see it completely. And there it is. Okay. So just click on that to leave presentation. And that's it. I hope you, you found this presentation useful. Again, feel free to write me uh, at my email, s-c-l-a-m-p-i-t at ponce, p-o-n-c-e dot inter, i-n-t-e-r dot e-d-u. I'll be glad to help you out. I know it's not easy being thrown into distance learning with such little time to get prepared. Important thing is that you have fun, laugh at your mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. I had to record this video four times <laughs> before I could get it right. So uh, just have fun with it. Let your students have fun with it too. That's all for now.